And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have it. I have a lo I have a brother returning from from his lo from his long absence, his long battle with sobri with sobriety. <laughs> 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 The um, the man who the mo the most infamously late and infamously gay member of the watch, and the and the man who who um pr who probably has it probably has an Alex Ovechkin jer jersey somewhere in his building. I declined to comment. <laughs> <laughs> it could it could be worse. You could you could you could have a Redskins jersey somewhere. Oh. <laughs> Decline the comment, <laughs> or even or even worse, a jersey of Breezes Christ. <laughs> uh, you know, I heard bar. I'm just got a drink. <laughs> yep, good bro good brother Doku is ba is back after. Was it was it been like five months since I've had you on last? It's it's been a while, man. It has been a hot minute. Mm -hmm. So what what a fucking way to come back. Me having to. Me having to play therapist for you for you dealing with the sobriety of of watching one of the more infamous um, blunders of Crunchyroll in the in the last few years, which is saying something, because we're gonna get into we're gonna get into Crunchyroll next month. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, speaking of sobriety, uh, f that. Cheers. <laughs> I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a couple of drinks for this one. Yep. I or, I or, I'm I wouldn't be surprised if you had pre-gamed before we even hit go. I so, probably should have. So, I need to give a I need to give a bit of background on this. I want to make I want to make explicitly clear. I did I did not pressure Doku into watching High Guardian Spice. He did that on his own volition because I guess he hates himself. However. Uh, when I saw him ranting on Twitter about how bad the show was, I was thinking, you know what? We can make some content out of this. I figured I'd come in, I'd act as the I'd act as the proverbial shrink. We'll call it monastic therapy, which is the title of this of this special episode of Geek Watch, and we'll work and we'll work for it from there because I figured it'd be a good spot to just get all of the bullshit out of out of your system immediately because. Well, this thing this thing isn't getting a season two. The odds of that are the same odds of Bopflix getting a season two and Oh, I'll get to you. <laughs> I'll I heard that it's not going to, and I'll drink to that one because thank thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. Spike Spiegel Ugh. Anyways, that's yeah. not the topic of this of this yeah. show. So let's let's take this all the, let's take this all the way back to the beginning. Now I had my own thoughts when the when the initial trailer for High Guardian Spice came out, but when that trailer first came out and um and people saw and people saw Kate Leth in the thing and I remember Squid having some very strong words about her. What was your, yeah. what was your initial take what was your initial take on the thing? Well, initially actually I was to put it to put it the uh, most honest way I possibly can, this is going to be a dumpster fire, and I look forward to it because it gives me something to make fun of and talk about. That kind of came to fruition, but also kind of didn't. I'll explain why later. But initially, okay, fine. Um, you're doing the. Th thing with some people that are of a certain gender and some hair color and can you tell me something about the show <laughs> like that, that's that's really what my major concern was is i i don't care what your writing room looks like tell me about the show tell me about the characters what's the world like what's the motivation i mean i know we've done world building it quite frequently on the show and i would say successfully it they didn't sell me on anything. <laughs> it's like, yeah. how bad can it get? 
spoiler, bad. <laughs> but no, that that initial trailer that came out, it, I didn't have a strong reaction one way or the other because it didn't really tell me anything. It, I, it was one of those things you look at and you go, okay, well, what, what's your point? Hmm. Yeah, I thought you're, I thought you're trying to sell me a show. <laughs> what, what are you trying to sell me? It. It, 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 it sucked. We'll just put it that way. It sucked. Mm -hmm. Now, with now with that in, with that in mind, the for me for me personally, I I did I I knew it was going to be a I knew it was going to be a dump it was a dumpster fire from the get go for one reason I knew immediately and that is optics because let's think let's think about the narrative that people had regarding why they bought into Crunchyroll it's a bullshit narrative but it's a narrative that people bought into the idea being that in that in an indirect way they were supporting the there was a they were supporting official releases and more specifically supporting the Studios that were do that were hand that were handling anime, as well as as well as stuff like simultaneous simultaneous launches, i.e., i.e. seeing seeing episodes as they um as they were airing in Japan. Not at the same time, obviously. God knows you don't want to deal with you don't want to deal with um time zone differences. I sure as hell don't relish it. And I know I'm gonna have to deal with that next month when I watch Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, have fun with that one, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll be drinking in the quarter and wishing you the best. Four days of it. <laughs> yep, <laughs> wishing you the best. Cheers. Have fun, dude. <laughs> but with but even but the but when that thing dropped and looked very much not like an anime, looked very much like the. Uh, like the bean mouth shit that has fe that has festooned um, Western animation for the be for the better part of a decade. Uh, it yeah, we'll talk it's, about that too. It set off of it, in my opinion, it set off a very bad precedent. It set off the, it set off a very bad message because the met, regardless of whether or not this was true or not, the optics were essentially saying your subscription money for Crunchyroll is going towards. The, is going towards a few people's vanity project. Um, actually, I'm 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 not gonna. I will get to that rabbit hole, but not just yet. Yeah, the it's m much in the same much in the same way that say um say art say artifact wasn't it wasn't a terrible game, but get, but a game that was released to the wrong audience. No, actually, that's that's actually a really good analogy. It's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go down that rabbit that that rabbit hole, but it. But um, the I know I know a lot of people like to use that phrase from Field of Dreams: "If you build it, they will come." That's not always true. You still have to read the damn room and act and actually understand what your customers want. Instead, instead of what, instead of what you think they'll like. Sometimes that it, can work. there's a, there's a whole lot of variation within that. It's not a black and white scenario, but the point is you've got to be flexible about this kind of thing, and just read the damn room. Well, since you bring that up, I guess this is the most appropriate time to say it. People don't subscribe to Country uh, Crunchyroll. Because they want a Cartoon Network show. And people who watch Cartoon Network don't necessarily want a Tumblr cartoon that's or comic strip that's been animated. And that's what this is. This is not an anime. I do think you we could... need to I do think we need to make one um, clarification though. A lot of people have gotten this idea that Kate Leth was the was the driving force behind this project. No. If any, if anything, if anything, she just she just happened to she just happened to swoop in on, on a on a vulnerable kids project. 
That's but I, I would argue it's the whole. It was the whole room. Oh, the, oh, believe me, there's shit in everybody's yard. But I do. It's, it's, but, um, on when it comes to the actual creator of High Guardian Spice, I do, f I do feel bad for them, because this was a passion project that they had pitched multiple times over over the over the course of about a decade including pitching it in the, to Crunchyroll a long time ago um in their in their very early days before they had a quote unquote stronger bandwidth um jury's out on that if in my opinion but they but they find they finally get to they finally get to make their passion project come to life and it's going to be remembered for all the wrong reasons because of because of all the mistakes that happened, and you know how it is when somebody makes one massive fuck up. It's hard for them to, it's hard for them to, it's hard for people to have confidence that they'll that they'll bounce back because everybody's like, well, if you fucked up that hard, how am I gonna, how can I trust you that you're not gonna fuck up again? Well, that that's the thing about this show. It it didn't have to be bad. It actually it did have potential. I'll open. I'll come out and say that because. Yes, I'm going to rip the show a new one, but there was potential. I mean, it, it, there actually was potential behind this show. I was actually kind of hoping it would have been a lot better than it actually turned out to be. And I don't blame uh, the creator. I don't blame the initial idea behind it. It's just, you guys swung and you missed. You missed the mark. It, yeah, You could have had something, but... You touched on one point. Knowing what market you're looking at ha is is one aspect. And that brings the. I remember. I remember at one. I remember at one point ranting about who this show is even for. And you would you would think, okay, this is this is for the St this is for the Steven this is for a younger audience for the Steven Universe kind of crowd with the with the bright vis with the bright visuals and and rounded expressions and all that. That's what you would. That's what you would think. Well, and if it was marketed as such, then it would have been the, fine. Then why? Why the foul? Why? Why have foul language and 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 put a put a um advisory warning before every episode? <laughs> it, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because that is one of the things that threw me off the most about this show. Is every episode have it's been intended for mature audiences, and then you watch the episode, you're like. What do you mean this is intended for mature audiences? Mm -hmm. I, I, the show doesn't know what the what audience the show is trying to reach. It are we talking adventure time? Are we looking at anime fans? Are we looking at the Tumblr crowd? I it's I, I would I would go as far as to say this. The show tries to hit all those beats, and by attempting to do so it doesn't do any of them good. At, I would argue they miss completely on a lot of it, because, to be blunt, <laughs> Adventure Time is a much better show than this is. Because at least with, it's funny. Even with the seasonal rot. Yeah, no, at least Adventure Time is funny, and it's quirky, but it, it, it knows what it is. This show tries to do so much and it, uh, appeal to so many different uh, demographics who obviously people have different tastes and it just it doesn't work it's it's just awkward and clunky it imagine watching adventure time a regular show or even steven universe and at the beginning of every uh, every episode they have a, a viewer discretion warning it it's just it's weird it, it's very off-putting i'm pretty i'm pretty sure something I'm pretty sure some some um, f some folks would would want to, would want to have trigger warnings, but that's a whole but that's far that's um a whole other can a whole other can of worms that we that we la that we'd laugh at. Um, although, if anything, there should be a trigger warning for people who enjoy good animation. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> We we will talk about that, I'm sure, because oh boy. But 
there, as a, there's the, now when it, the whole, one of the big problems that I remember having when the trailer launched is, you, is, um, what are you trying to sell me? You need to sell me something. Because in that initial trailer, they talked, they talked about it being about four girls in a, in a school for guardians. And this is, this is where the importance of a answering and asking a bunch of questions when you're world building is imp is important. Who are these four girls? What's what kind of world are they in? We get we get that magic is involved. What kind of magic is going to be involved? And when it comes to magic alone, there's about two dozen questions that can be asked just with that, and the answers to those prompt even more questions, which are things that you cannot hand wave away, regardless of how much D and D you think you've played. Well, and, and that is that is a huge issue that the show actually does run into because, okay, what's a guardian? What are they guarding against? What's the history? Mm. How does how does the magic system work? What is what is the enemy? Who's the big bad? What's the backstory? What is the history? The show takes its sweet time making really bad jokes that nobody cares about, but it doesn't answer any of those questions. So. As far as world building is concerned, I would ask you, what world building? It, it, we get maybe like one or two vague passes at something that might seem like world building, but it just proposes it just it just proposes more questions and it doesn't answer any of the previous questions. So I, again, it's do, do, do you guys have a do you have an editor? Do you even have writers? <laughs> well, no, what's have, going on? Have, I'm more confused. They have, than I... they have writers, but um, one thing that I'm reminded of is a few years ago I did a I did a short musing on my thoughts on the on um Power Rangers Hyperforce that pow, that Power Rangers R RPG campaign that was campaign that was done by Hyper RPG over the course of 20 sessions, and one of the big issues that I had is. They announced from the get-go that they that they were doing twenty quote unquote episodes, and yet a lot of the episodes they end up fo instead of focus when you have that little amount of episode time, you don't have enough room to fuck around. Mm -hmm. There's a re there's a reason why you don't see a whole lot of filler episodes whenever you're watching, say, a thirteen episode anime, because you've only got thirteen episodes. Oh yeah, like with Ostra Lost in Space, it, you you got to explain everything, and you have to do it in a short time span. You, mm -hmm. There's a lot of questions. You got to answer them quickly. Or hell, look at say, and some now some might some might argue it doesn't do the it doesn't do the job that we, that well, but that's debatable. Look at Gunbuster, absolute fucking classic. It has only six episodes to work with. So it has to it has to do all that story in that amount of time. That means that so, that something obviously, when it comes to a lot of a lot of the de a lot of the world building details, some of those you, some of those you you're gonna ha you're gonna have to cut in ter in terms of what you focus on. But the point it, the point I'm getting at is using your time effectively, and a a really good example in my opinion of of not using your time effectively in High Guardian Spice. Is the journey to just get to just getting to High Guardian Academy? You know, I actually didn't mind that particular aspect of the show, not because it flushed out the world building or it explained to me what what the world was like or gave me any information on the characters, because it didn't. The only reason I liked that part is because I liked the uh, it was like an it was a uh, a gnome or a hobbit or a dwarf or something and then the the two characters that were in charge of the trolley that were like yeah we don't care throw your bags on the thing and get on get on the thing and go go do your shit like i liked those characters it, they were actually funny because it was the definition of no fucks given it it's like yeah okay whatever get, get on get on the bus and yeah you know, shut up we don't care like yeah, no, I, I I liked that. That was that felt 
that felt natural, I guess. It, it's it's the way I would I would approach someone. It's like, hey, look at me. I'm gonna. Get this. We don't care. Get on the bus. <laughs> I've got a schedule. I'm working a job here. That Dude. that alone is that alone isn't the isn't the problem that I wanted to get at. But more of the fact that the whole getting on a transport on the, on the journey is repeated three times. Mm. Well, yeah, that that's honestly one of the lesser issues that this uh, show has, well, but it's indicative of a larger problem. Yeah, well, to to use it, imagine this. Con consider consider um, consider the journey consider the journey just to just. And I know I know I pick on people who ab who abuse who abuse the use of Harry Potter, but. In this given the fact that we're dealing with a magical a school that's magic affiliated, I think it's warranted here. Consider the journey just getting to Hogwarts. First, have to first have to find platform nine and three quarters, then and then enter in the then enter in the proper wall, and then get and then get on the train, and that'll t and that takes you str and then get on then get on a boat that takes you to that takes you to the place. Well, yeah. see, that makes that makes sense for the world, though, because you you have to go through these steps in order to get to your destination. That does require a degree of world building, and it has to be believable. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm fine with that. This imagine, show imagine doesn't if, take the time to do it. Imagine if when it came when it came to when it came to that you at, you ended up seeing three scenes of them transferring between different trains on the way. That's kind. That's kind of the angle that I'm going with. Whereas well, it's it's not even just that, Mildra. It in the first episode, we already know the the one blue hair. Uh, what's her name? Uh, the blue hair chick. That's not time. Uh, no, time was the one with anger issues. Yeah, so it was. Um, sage parsley. Sage, that's it. Which, incidentally, it's way too on the nose to have Sage be the be the magic bookworm character. Yeah, <laughs> that. In but... fact, in fact, I think it. I I think it's quite. I think it's quite telling that all four of the characters can be can be summarized with um, D and D character classes. And also, it's High Guardian Spice, but those are herbs. It, is it just me that got annoyed by that? I those get, are I get the joke. Those are herbs, not spices. I get the joke. It's just it just doesn't work. the jo The joke is that is that it's using the four herbs from the Scarborough Fair poem. I know it's it's just something that annoys me. I, I know it's petty. I, I admit it's petty. But it, as someone who enjoys cooking, and it's. Urgh, those aren't spices, Urgh. but off topic. What what really irritated me, and I guess since we're, I know we're not doing episodic, but with the first episode, we're already shown that Sage has the ability to I don't know make trolleys and trains and boats and buses irrelevant because uh well she can she can. Fly and do shit. Is, I mean, yeah, she has a flying is, treasure chest. For fuck's sake! This like, is come where, on, man. This is where we get to one of, to one other aspect. Now, you and you and I have both dabbled in fantasy world building and just and just fantasy writing. And one of the, and one of the things that we that we end up spending way too much time on is anytime anytime there is a magic system, we have to exp we have to explain how it works. I know You're not wrong. I know a lot of people have the have the whole have the whole idea because all they because all all they've done is is watch is watch the cast of Critical Role play D and D is think that oh gee, oh the wiz oh wizards can just cast can just cast spells and that's it and that's all you need no the reason the if you're if you're writing in a magic system you have to give some degree of explanation and. When you consider that even even mad even magic themed shonen like Black Clover or Fairy Tale have at least some degree of understanding of this, you have no excuse. Well, it, it's frustrating. It really is. 
the closest thing that we get throughout the series is the, is this supposed conflict between new magic and old magic. However, the however the problem is we don't we um barely have an understanding about what e what either of them are. We it one would one would think based on based on based on zeitgeist and cultural osmosis that old magic is is supposed to be more dangerous, but we never really see that. We're just we're just to we're just told that using old magic is something you shouldn't be doing. Well, it's it's not even just that. I mean, yeah, we have the idea that there's two different magic systems, in new magic and old magic. They don't even take the time to explain to us how either work. It's just one is a thing and the other is a thing. And also, you can use magic, but why aren't you using it for practical application? Again, even just watching the first episode, I have more questions than I do answers. I, I don't. I don't. I, I, I literally I don't understand what's going on. It's like, can you sort of maybe ease me into this a little bit? Can you explain it to me? It. it no, it's just hey, we have a flying chest and hey, quirky, oh so random. Uh, okay, we get it. We're you're going for for humor, uh, but seriously, why, why, why didn't you guys just fly? To, to the place or use the flying chest. Hey, can we write on the chest? That actually seems like it would be more fun. It, it, there's a lot of things that just it doesn't it doesn't feel like it has any it doesn't feel like it has any vision. It doesn't feel orchestrated. It doesn't feel like anybody thought through what the show was supposed to be. It felt like they just threw something together and yeah, people will like it because quirky and random. That might work for Tumblr or Twitter or Facebook or whatever, but when you're trying to present people with a show and a, a story, that doesn't work. You have to at least give a little bit of thought to it. And I would say that's the most irritating part about the show is it doesn't feel like whoever the writers and creators were behind the show actually cared. It They just tossed stuff at a wall and expected it to stick and... It, to be, it, it it was boring. I had... Would it be out of line for me to say that the way it, the way it's describing itself fe um, feels like it feels like it's relying on relying on these zeitgeist expectations of fantasy in general and high fantasy in particular to fi to fill in the blanks in people's head? Uh, I don't think that's out of place at all because it. It does feel that way. Is they just assume like oh, it's hmm? How how do I want to phrase this? They're trying to make it so stereotypical that people just accept it. And I, I I'm a fan of fantasy. I know you're a fan of fantasy. Oh, yeah. It so because we're fans of fantasy. We expect decent world building. We expect decent character development. We expect there to be at least some sort of underlying story. You can't just say, hey, look, magic, we, and expect people to just accept it. That's not you can, how... When it, uh, that's, the, when it comes to that, it depends upon, it depends upon the medium that you're, t that you're expressing the story. Like, if you're, if you're trying to do a fantasy, co a fantasy comic strip, like, say, Order of the Stick, or one of my personal favorites, Life of the Party... You can fa you can fall back you can fall back on some on some of the fantasy cliches because of the fact that you're only going to have maybe maybe three fr maybe three or six frame um, frames or even just one frame in the case of Life of the Party to tell the story and thus tell the joke. But when you have fu when you have um, full twenty five minute episodes, you don't get that luxury. Well, exactly if. If you're saying, if you present somebody with a setting where it's like, this is a fantasy setting. Hey, look at this person. That's clearly a wizard. They can conjure a fireball. It's easy to accept the fact that this person looks like a wizard. Magic exists. Clearly, they should be able to conjure a fireball and toss a fireball. It, we can accept that because it's it's expected. But when when you start trying to expand out, and this is where High Guardian Spice really drops the ball. 
when you start trying to expand out your world, you start trying to explain things and you start trying to make people believe like this is the way the world works. You have to at least give us a reasonable, it doesn't even have to be believable. It has to be a reasonable explanation. And they don't, they just sort of gloss over it. It's like, well, why? It, it, that kind of is, I, I guess I'll touch on my, my major number one complaint since this seems like the right time to do it. The writing on the show is not the greatest thing in the world. It, I'm not going to go as far as to say it's the worst thing. Yeah, it's it, it leaves a lot to be desired. The world building is almost non-existent, which is very disappointing because I do think the show on a on a premise level has potential. But the problem that it has is the first six to seven episodes, nothing really happens. It if it was offensively bad, I actually would have enjoyed it more. The problem is, it's boring. It, that's really the number one issue. It doesn't do anything that's engaging. It doesn't do anything entertaining. It's, you know, LOL, so random. Here's, you know, 7 to 10 to 12 comic panels worth of actual content and storytelling and character development. And then everything else is basically just wasted time. It, it's like, I, I don't care. Like, can you, can you tell me a story? Like what's going on? They, they, they're not even doing anything. It takes until like what episode seven or eight before there's any real inclusive story that even begins it. Uh, my, my biggest complaint about the first five episodes was, Okay, you could say it's slice of life, or it's just you know whatever. But I don't know any of the motivations behind the characters. I, I don't know. I, I vaguely know the backstory of one. Vaguely is being generous. Nothing really happens. It's just go to school, do a thing. Hey, did you see the thing? Did you do the thing? Okay, here's another thing. Did did you did you finish doing the thing? Guess what? Here's a thing. You know what to do next? Oh yeah, do another thing. I don't care. What's the point? It's boring as hell. And that's why I... I it got to the point where after episode 7, every 30 to 40 seconds, maybe a minute, I would just hit the arrow key. Okay, let's get 10, 15 seconds further. Is anything important happening? No. All right, let's keep skipping. Anything important happening? Nope. Let's keep skipping. And next thing I know, oh, I'm on the last episode. Did anything important happen? Kind of. Maybe. It, I wouldn't even know because the story didn't engage me enough to care. And that's really what where the show suffers the most is you could have had something, but it doesn't seem like you either cared about the characters, it doesn't seem like you cared about the story, it doesn't seem like you cared about the world. It was boring. Boring is all hell. And that's my biggest complaint. Yeah, and I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure some some will pro some will probably go with the whole thing of oh of oh you need oh you need the show to entertain you. Yes! If I'm spending my time, if I'm spending my time sitting through this, I should at least get something out of it. And as an aside, I will not to I will not tolerate the it was the it wasn't meant for you argument because you have to actually build an you have to actually have know what your audience is going to be before you can make that particular claim. And they don't. They well and truly do not. Well, like I said, if if the show was offensively bad, I would have preferred that over it just being eh. Like, I, I can't even really say it's bad in the sense that I hated it. Because I didn't. I, I didn't hate it. So, it's more of I felt like I wanted to care about it, but they also didn't give me a reason to care about it. 
it, I feel I'm in kind of a strange place with this one. It, at least X-Arm, as atrocious as that was, I actually enjoyed watching X-Arm more because it was obvious how bad the show was, and due to its, its atrociousness, I enjoyed it. This one, I, I did find a few things I liked, but for the most part, I just didn't care enough. I, it's like, oh, we're only on episode five, and eh, there's seven more of this to go. I, I, at least if something is bad, you still have people engaged because it's like, oh god, how much worse can it get? This didn't even pull that off. The the other thing the other thing to the the other the other thing to note the other thing I I want to note is when it comes to all when it comes to all four of the characters, there it there is the implication of cer of certain of cer of certain char of certain characterization, but it is all very is all either very surface level or it's never it's never it's never delved into. Now it could be argued that a lot that they were saving a lot of that for a se for a season two. I would argue you should not write with the expectation you're going to get a season two. If you do oh, that, you're going to be setting yourself up for failure. Oh, and so that's the thing. Like with the main character, where it's like, okay, they give us some sort of backstory. We know what's going on. Why does it take you so long to get to that backstory? And why is that that main? I think it's Rosemary, the yeah. the pink haired girl. Why is she the only one that gets a backstory? I mean, the elf they kind of touch on it a little bit, and then it gets promptly ignored and tossed by the wayside. It sage the ma the blue haired mage chick. They sort of, sort of, kind of talk about it, and then that promptly gets tossed to the wayside. And then we get the dwarf, uh, the dwarf Parsley. chick, Parsley. Parsley, who from the main the main cast of four. She's easily my favorite. I like, I actually enjoyed her character quite a bit. She's she's actually very entertaining. Every time she was on screen, it's like oh thank god because in, in a weird way, um, and you're you're the only one who's gonna get this. She kind of reminds me of Lopin, just a lot, just a lot. <laughs> you know, L Lopin, the man, of a, the man of a thousand cousins. Oh, but it's true. <laughs> it's so true. No, I, I actually I really liked Parsley because it she's funny, she's up she's upbeat, she's optimistic, but at the same time it, they give us enough background behind her. It's like I actually legitimately care. Like you gave me a reason to care about this character. I en I enjoyed her thoroughly. It in my opinion, she's easily the best character out of the four main. It with the exception of the uh, what was the uh, the bitchy uh, the one bitchy uh, oh thyme. No, not thyme. Uh, um, the, the, the yeah, the chick that spilled the uh, sage's tea and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like her because she embraces her bitchy assholishness, and it's like you know what? Yeah, you're a dick, but as long as you embrace it, it makes her enjoyable to watch. Mm -hmm. They. She's not just brooding like people are bad, or she's not just the you know the ditzy stereotype or anything. It's like no, she's actually kind of fun to watch. It, I don't like her, but she's an entertaining character for what the character is. Mm -hmm. it, she has personality. The other three, it's like uh, okay, the one's ditzy, the other's brainy, and the other one's just edgy and moody because reasons, I guess. Because it, elf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like I said, there's potential here. Like, it's not. I'm not just trying to shit on the show for the sake of shitting on it. I do think that the show actually could have been very good. It's just it from seeing how they worked with a uh, parsley amarella or amarellas. Y'all, y'all could have made a good show. I know you have the ability to write compelling characters. You could make it funny, you could make it engaging, you could make it uh, emotional. I know you have the potential and the ability to do it. The fact that you didn't is disappointing. Which I do want to speak briefly on on Pamel because of how bad because of how badly that was voiced and then I then I, then I looked at it and it's like 
How the hell do you how the hell do you manage to get that bad of a performance out of Barbara Goodson? <laughs> That's a really good question. <laughs> Uh, but when it comes to bad performances, and once again, and I want to make clear, I'm not slagging any of the voice cast. They were doing the best with what they had. Um, usually, if I'm slagging performances, I put it on the, I will put it on the director, unless somebody is horribly, horribly, horribly miscast. But Julian Coster as Slime Boy, I actually had to put on subtitles so I could understand what the fuck he's saying. Uh, see, I liked that character, but... It's like they were trying to do an anime version of Boomhauer. <laughs> 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 Which, to be fair, an anime, an anime version of Boomhauer is not a terrible idea if you're for a, for a slice-of-life show. If you're do, doing somebody who has, a, who has a ridiculously thick accent, and there's... There's been plenty of characters who, who have had, who have had accent as one of their primary gimmicks. Um, usually, usually, if say, usually somebody who has say a Kansai Ben accent in a fair amount of anime, and of course, um, in Azumanga Daio, Osaka gets her nickname because, well, she's from Osaka. Well, fair enough. It, it just to point something out, since we're talking about a slime boy, we're talking about Amarilla. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a problem when the side characters are more interesting and better developed than your main characters. It, there was it, at least an attempt to have some degree of an arc with Snapdragon. Um, I will I will note that having the creator of the show vo voice one of the voice um voice professor Car voice professor Caraway leaves a very bad taste in my mouth. Um <laughs> Large, largely, beca largely because of the fact that there's been there's been t there's been exper there's been experience. Plus, you can only if you're gonna do if you're gonna do that, it's best to do that with a character who's not going to be doing a whole lot of voice work. I know a whole I know a lot of people bring up when Monty Ohm was voicing Ozpin in in Ruby, but the very at the very least during during his tenure, Ozpin wasn't. Spe wasn't doing a whole lot of speaking roles. Um. Well, the the reason I say when your side characters that you haven't given really that much attention to end up being better than your main characters, it does it does speak to the uh, the original problem that I was talking about. Your writers aren't focusing on the things that they should be focusing on because they're not trying to tell us a good story. They're not giving us background. They're not fleshing out the characters, but instead we get either LOL so random, you know, Twitter slash Tumblr humor, or we get something that's talking about a, a social issue or a political issue that just comes across as preachy and feels, for lack of a better term, out of place. It's... Right. So, with the one example, the 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 teacher who is who is trans. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're trans. So, going back into building out the magic system and how things work. All I have to use magic every month to you know, be who I want to be. You could take that and actually make that a really good arc. Are you going to go figure out magic that can make this a permanent thing so you don't have to use magic every month? How did you discover the magic in the first place? It, how, how did you it, again, there's a lot of there's a lot of backstory you could explore there. There's a lot of world building. There's a lot of uh, developing the magic system. There's a lot of stuff you could do with that and they just choose to do nothing with it. And it's like, no, I'm just trans and trans is a thing and it Blah blah blah. Political preaching, modern day policy. Blah blah blah. You wanna know what's? You wanna know what I find especially funny when it comes to that? Um, one of one of my er, one of my earliest examples of an anime that I physically bought handled handled the whole trans thing better in 1997. That being um that being did you ever see the original um Orphan, the first attempt at making it at making it into an anime, not the more recent one that's closer to the light novels. You know, I actually don't think I did. Um, 
when the when the crew ends up arriving at ball tenders for the first time, they end up meeting an old fr an old friend of orphans named Stephanie. After th after the short after the short arc involving the killing doll, which um, she released by accident, she's her one of her big claim to f her big claim to fame is being is being a bit of an expert on a on ancient runes, specifically runes regard regarding the heavenly ones, and. It's re it's revealed later on that she was originally o Orphan's old partner named Steven. She ended up she ended up getting badly injured and had to use so much of her power to heal herself that she decided to make a few other changes. Ended up becoming ended up becoming Stephanie. Um, and I should note that it's up it's up in the air whether she whether she's trans or just or a cross dresser. But the the point of the point of the matter is is that. It's brought up. Uh, it's brought up maybe twice, but the key thing, the key thing with her, with Stephanie's appearances, is more about her. Is more about her expertise. And even even with that, you don't. You she ends up. She ends up giving a bit of a bit of advice to both Magic and Cleo in the in the times that she shows up. So she's she isn't th she isn't there just to just to make a big deal out of. Th just to um, be be some parade or or something like that. Um. Well, that that's what's so annoying with how uh, how High Guardian Spice treats its characters is again when they're not just you know Tumblr stereotypes. Mm -hmm. They want to they want to use these characters to talk about things that are yes part of the uh, the modern day real world. Uh, discourse the the social conversation the political conversation but in in doing so they just make these characters tokenized versions of i'm trans and this character is a good person so it yeah you know, we have to check this box off we have to check that box off we have to do this we have to do that oh, but they don't but again they don't they don't do anything of significance with the character it I'd say, I'd say, I'd say when it one other one other exa one other example of this of this kind of thing that I that um that I I thought I thought was a massive waste just based on their appearances was um was a was Anise and Aloe. Uh, which the how, which one were those again? The the um. The two the two women who ba who basically who basically manage the place where where um where Rosemary and Sage are staying. Oh yeah, that was uh that was like Rosemary's aunt C cousin. Cut there, yeah. No, I I didn't mind those characters because to be blunt, out of the entire cast, they seem to be the only ones that are actually competent. Well, there's cert there's certainly that, but because but um. But there's not a whole. But there isn't a whole lot more to them besides what you could infer from their appearance. And I don't know. I don't know why. But when I. But whenever I'd see the two of them, I always. I always. I was I was imagine that it would be. That it would be a bit amusing to have them. Have them. Have a bit of a. Um, a, a bit of a. A bit of an Abbott and Cost Costello type type of setup. Um, one of the. With the two of them, with the two of them bouncing snark off of each other. Well, it, they they way. kind of they kind of touch on that, especially when the uh, the ones like don't come into my kitchen. Like mm -hmm. it again, you ha you have something here. Like the characters have, you know, it feels like there's an actual voice here. It feels like the character is actually compelling, and I would like to see more of them on screen. And then all of a sudden, go like. Oh yeah, well we're gonna go to we're gonna go to bed and sleep with each other. Oh, by the way, they're gay. It, yeah, we get it. it. But then they don't. Again, they don't do anything with the characters. It's like, wait, I, I, I don't care about what's going on right now. Can uh, they were funny? Can we bring Can we bring them back? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm I actually saying, enjoyed them more. I'm saying that as funny as as funny as they are, there's a whole lot there's a whole lot more when it comes to funny that you could have done. And I will admit, part of it is the fact that I've I have. Um, I have jokingly s said that w that one of the thi that one of the things I have wa I have wanted for for someone to, for somebody to write, and if I if I if and I've considered writing it myself is 
instead 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 of do instead of doing it, stop stop doing stop doing new stop doing newlywed gay or lesbian couples have have a pair that's like an old married couple <laughs> oh no i don't that would have been nice mm -hmm. it, the, i guess i guess we're going to have to talk about this it's annoying for it's annoying that the people who are like, oh, you don't like Hard Guardian, Hard High Guardian Spice because of uh, your this buzzword. The two that I found most interest are lesbian couple because they were funny and actually entertaining when they were given screen time. And the character I think that has the interesting story arc is the trans character. So yeah, that argument doesn't hold water. And I, I it, know somebody is going to yell. It, it, it just for, doesn't. There's a lot you can do with that. I know somebody is going to yell at us for you for skip for slipping up on the name and just referring to, and just using the term the trans character. Except when that when that and when that ends up being the the big advertisement for the care for the character, well, you get what you pay for. If you're gonna if you're gonna have that as, if you're gonna have that as the <laughs> characterization and ver and very little else aside from very surface level thing of them being them being some variation of a good person um there's then you're not giving us a, a whole lot of a whole lot of meat on the bones that's why i brought up stephanie um well and, and again that was the selling point for the character is this character is trans therefore you must care about them it, no i actually do quite enjoy the character. I think the character was good. I think there's a lot you can do with that particular character, but because of because of the decisions you made as writers, the only thing you gave me of significance is that this character is trans. Mm -hmm. It you didn't give me a reason to actually care about the character. It, it you only told me that they're trans. Okay, we could explore that. That you ex it, I use magic to be the person I want to be. Can we explore that story arc a little bit? But you didn't give me anything else of significance. The only thing you did was use this character as a tokenization because we have to have a trans character. I don't remember the name for a reason. That's not my fault. That's a fault on the writers. And that's what's so irritating about the show is it is painfully, painfully tokenizing checkboxes. It if you're going to if you're going to put that type of character into your show. Can we please explore who they are, what their backstory is, what the background is, how they fit into this world? There's a lot you can do, and I would, I would like to see a story like that. But the only thing you gave me is, hey, this character's trans. Okay, cool. Uh, remind me of their name again? <laughs> and I should, I should note that when I, when I came to... The when, when it comes, when it comes to when it comes to just the just the setting, um, I remember I remember one other I remember one person making a comparison to the, to the way to the kind of everyday magic that High Guardian Spice wants to use versus the kind of everyday magic and magic adjacent stuff that's used in the Owl House. Oh yeah, I've seen a lot of comparisons to that, and. Like for just to just to use a couple of, just to use a couple of examples with spice, um, the the school the school bell is a gargoyle, but it still makes the sound that a school bell would make. It just it's just an animated gargoyle for a, for a couple seconds. Whereas, um, in something like the Owl House, the be the bell is a monster that screams, and it you is, know. <laughs> It it's funny you bring up the uh, the school bell gargoyle because mm -hmm. every time I see that, I can't help but think about Ira you know, Welcome to Demon School, mm -hmm. where the gargoyle literally screams and Irima is like, "What the hell?" Because that's how any normal person would react to that. Like, I know it's subtle. I know it's not consequential. But it's those details that you have to pay attention to that would, you know, that would make the show just a little bit better. Where it's like, 
even if we had a character going that that's a gargoyle why why does it sound like that if, even just having them take note of it and because the audience is obviously looking at that and going well that that that's a gargoyle but it sounds like school bells they, that would be funny it, but that requires an, a that requires a certain level of uh, attention to detail that we don't get from this show and that's I know I'm I'm going to repeat myself it's annoying that the people who created this show come across as so lazy is that they can't even focus on something that simple it I know now a common defense that I, that I've often heard is budget that they didn't that they don't have the kind of budget to do to put in those kind of details I don't buy that I don't buy that either and the reason why and the reason why I don't think I don't think it applies is because if that if that really is the case then that speaks more to the, to their to their own inadequacies than anything else well I I would say that 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 type of argument is complete and utter and yes I know this is not family friendly anymore we but we're not that, family that... friendly here in the monastery you know and you, watch, <laughs> you know this you should know better you've been here since day one in that case, well, obviously I'm going to take off all my inhibitions. That type of argument is absolute fucking bullshit. And the reason it's absolute fucking bullshit, and it's a fucking vapid argument, are you telling me that you don't have the budget to have someone go, why the hell does that sound like that? It's literally all you have to do. It's just acknowledging that the gargoyle sounds like fucking school bells. As opposed to sounding like a screeching gargoyle, it, it it doesn't take it doesn't take budget. I can do it for you right now for free. It would make the show more entertaining. You're telling you they don't have the budget to do it. it oh, fuck off. Well, You're not, just, not just with not with that specifically, but just but just with but just the argument of not having the budget to put in the kind of details to make the world feel alive. Um, if you don't, if you don't have, if you don't have it, then you then use the use the budget to hide your weaknesses. And oh, that that's the thing, though. It it's not that they didn't have the budget. It's not that they, uh, they well, to be blunt, they probably didn't think about it. But your issue is not your issue is not about all oh, the fans didn't like it because of the reasons and. It, no, the issue is that you guys didn't fucking care about the story that you're trying to tell to the people that you expect to pay money for your story. It, if you don't care about it enough to look at small details like that, which again, easily addressed, it, it would take one line of dialogue that would take a whopping 15 to 20 seconds out of the show. If you don't care enough about that, you clearly don't care, period. And it, it shows in how this show is constructed. It shows in how the characters are written. It shows in the world building. It shows in the animation where you have freaking stock art of bread on the fucking table. Hey, it, it clearly, your producers, your writers, it, they don't care. So if they don't care, why the fuck should I care? It that That's what's... That's what's the most annoying and insulting thing about this show. If I'm going to waste my fucking time watching this show, God forbid I watch all 12 episodes of it, because it, that anyone that did watch all 12 episodes of it... Did, Didn't you? Uh, no, I, I got to episode 7 and then I just started skipping, because I was trying to figure out when it actually got good. Spoiler warning, it never did. But you take six episodes and you still haven't given me a decent plot. You haven't given me a decent background for any of the major characters. The only character who's actually enjoyable is fucking Parsley, aside from the uh, the other side characters who just show up randomly. And thank God they do, because if I had to sit with the other uh, the other three, Parsley excluded, it, it it would just be that much more fucking painful for me. Why the hell? Why the hell should I care? Because you clearly fucking don't, and you're the fucking creator. And now that I'm calling you out, saying your show is lazy, your your writing sucks, 
your character development sucks. Your world building sucks. I'm, I've given you explanations as to why it's not just, you know, that's the transphobe or homophobic or that. No, I, I don't care about any of that. It's your story fucking sucks. And I'm telling you why. And you're going to dismiss me as I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, if that's the direction we want to go with, good luck getting a fucking season two. Oh, the I think it's I think it's very I think it's very telling that when they were putting out trailer, when they were putting out trailers for the whole thing, um, they had they had they were having comments turned they were having um comments turned off. Um, that's the thing they don't. They don't want any form of constructive criticism. They don't want any real feedback. They just like, they just want, hey, we're going to make our show and it's going to be great. And yes, let's go. Let's go walk into the safe space and lock the door. And this will be our hug box. And everybody did a great job. We'll eat cake and ice cream and, you know, everything will be fine. It, that ain't the, that's not the way the real world, real world works, ladies and gentlemen. It, and the fact that I'm going to call you out on it and say, you wasted my fucking time watching this fucking show. It, that's not even the most atrocious part. The atrocious part is the show could have been good if you actually gave a shit. The fact of the matter is the way you presented the characters, the way you wrote the characters, the way you presented the world, the way you've treated the people who actually were looking forward to the show it says a lot about you. And the fact of the matter is, it says that you didn't fucking care. All you wanted was your your little pet project and, hey, look, we did a thing and yay, congratulations, go us. But you don't want to hear that your thing sucked because you didn't put the fucking time and effort into making it good. And that's the biggest disappointment because this show could be good. I... I honestly, truly, 100% believe you could take this show and with a little bit of tender, loving care, you could actually make it a very compelling story. You really could. It's you just, they didn't want to take the time to do that. And that's what annoys me more than anything. Because as long as, as long as you care about it, yeah, maybe it's not for me. That'll be fine, but if you care about it and you care about the characters, you care about the world, you can make something that's good and compelling and that people actually want to watch and they will enjoy. And if they do, awesome. It, I want more of good things and less of bad things. So even if you produce something that is objectively good, even if I personally don't like it, you still produce something that's objectively good. I would be happy for that. This is not objectively good. This is bad. And and it's bad because the people who produced it, the people who wrote it, were lazy. They didn't care about it. And that's on them. That is not on me. That's not on anybody else who's criticizing this show. If you enjoyed it, I'm glad you did. But I, I don't think I don't think the uh, developers and writers and creators of this show gave you what you deserve. If you had to spend time of spending time out of your life watching this show, it, they should have given you something better. Because again, there is potential. Something that I something that I do find extremely telling when it comes when it comes to when it comes to a show like this is. And I, I've seen I've seen this with a certain other show that we'll be get that we'll be getting into in in due time next year. Who is when it comes when it comes to the people who what who who claim to like it? Um, whenever I ask, what about it did you like? The answers that I usually end up getting are. Very surf or very surface level things that have ver that have more to, that have more to do with presentation than anything else, or in other, or you ha or you have um you have very superficial elements or ju or just the appearance of something you know ver um the things that wouldn't stick whereas if if I were if I 
if I were to ask you what you liked about, say, let's let's throw a bo let's throw a bone out there and let's use a, ser a series that both of us are familiar with, Record of Lodas War. There's about five pages worth of stuff that you could write <laughs> of, when it comes to what when it comes to what you liked about it. Only five? Rather presumptuous of you. I'm ba I'm ballparking it, but the point the point is there's a lot of stuff that you could say that you liked about it. And even if I had to use a more recent ex more recent example of of a piece of media that you liked, there are things you could t there are things involving involving every aspect that you could tell me, and you would tell no, me in, de in um de in detail. You wouldn't be flighty about it. That is ki that is kind of what I'm getting at. That. On. And so that that is a good point to bring up because I, I have seen people trying to defend the show and say it's good and it's like oh it's good because it had this or it had that, but they can't explain to you why it's good. Not only it, the the thing that's all the more damning about that kind of thing is the is the fact that there were um I I already made there have, there have been two shows that this is that this has been compared to. I already mentioned one of them. With um, with the Owl House, the other one that some people brought up er very early on was Little Witch Academia. Oh uh, yeah. Well, Little Witch Little Witch Academia is not the most original when it comes to when it comes to writing or the world that it presents. It's able to get away with a lot more because studio tr because Studio Trigger doing Studio Trigger things. Well, let's be honest. That entire show is basically a stereotype, but. Because it's a stereotype doesn't inherently mean it's bad. It's still entertaining, the point, but it the is, point is that very it, stereotypical. It, it is able to it is able to carry a lot of its flaws off of the strength of its visuals. You can you ha and in a lot of in, in plenty of shows you have the opposite end of things where as much as as much as as dated as um as reboot is gonna look, um. People still like reboot or still like Beast Wars because of the because of the strength of the cast within those shows. I mean, I'll admit I still like reboot because it's but the characters of uh, Megabyte and Hexadecimal are legitimately good villains. I mean, yeah, we would look back on it now and go, "Wow, this is cheesy as shit," and you're right, it is. But <laughs> that's not the point. The point the point is. It's entertaining. It and that that's that's where this show fails. It's not it's not bad enough for me to compare it to Troll 2. It's not bad enough for me to compare it to X Arm. It's also not good enough for me to give it a pass either. It's just flat out boring. It's and, lazy. Oh and I'll be I'll be honest. Um I don't think I don't think anybody is going the only people who are going to remember the show are going to be the people who use it as a bl as a bludgeon for similar projects, much in, much in the same way that more people used Dragon Ball Evolution as a pejorative than actually saw it. And you're not wrong. I can't disagree there. Um, that's not that's not to, that's not me calling out pe calling out people with a with a oh you oh you can't you can't dislike it if you didn't see it. No the no, the point is, is that is that the reaction was so negative that the name itself became became an in joke. And only well, again that. Uh, sorry, go ahead. We had and we had the same thing a few years. We had the same kind of thing a few years ago with the whole Netflix Death Note. I mean, at, at least with Netflix Death Note, it was bad enough that I could point and laugh at it. It. This has not achieved that level of lullable, memeable, terrible. The only, it's in my in my hum, in my humble opinion, um, if if a sh if a show or a film ends up being the ends up being remembered more for the meme potential, that is actually quite damning. Because when I think of when I think of sh when I think of things that were things like that that ended up being remembered more for memes. I think of stuff like B movie, where more people more people use use certain clips to make use certain clips of the show to make memes or use Im use images of the show to make memes. Um, 
Most people who even remember Troll 2 only remember the oh my god scene and how ba and how bad that was and use that for a bunch of memes. Well, to, to, but that's that's the bad part, and that's kind of my point, is who's making memes out of High Guardian Spice? I've only seen one, and that's, uh, I think it's from episode two, where the main character, Rosemary, is in the bed asleep and then shoots up in the bed, is just like, nah! It's like, that's literally the only meme to come out of this entire show. Mm -hmm. Everything else is just, no one cares. It so it again. It's not even bad enough to be meme worthy. It's just I, I I wouldn't even say it's bad. It's 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 actually not bad. It's boring. It. I would I would give it this. I would give it the same analogy that SF Debris did about Star Star Trek Insurrection. Bad enough to be hated. Not bad enough to be loved. I mean, that... I don't even know if it's bad enough to be hated. It... I would say it's bad enough for me to not care. Mm -hmm. it, like I said, I got to episode 7 and everything af after episode 7. Even when they started giving us, you know, an actual plot. Which, yes, they, 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 they do introduce an actual plot. It takes them six to seven episodes to get to it, but they do introduce it. But by the time we get to it, I'm already bored enough that I literally do not give a shit. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm, most people are gonna, most people are gonna have that that kind that kind of res, that kind of response to it. Um, yeah. uh, it, it it is disappointing because. Either make something that is atrocious and own it, which I would be okay with. You never. I mean, pe people see, people seem to like Tommy Wiseau, even though even though the room is <laughs> god awful to sit through. <laughs> oh. uh, I can't disagree, but no, it's it's either make something that's atrocious, but put some passion and some effort into it so that I can care about it, or make something that's really really good because if you if you put the same type of passion into the show that you did to i don't know commenting on twitter you could have made a good show i mean there like i said there there is there is something here that you could work with or at the very least you could have made an enter a entertainingly bad show I, either or it makes something absurdly bad that's entertaining or make something absurdly good that's entertaining um, the the fact of the matter is the show just isn't entertaining it's just let's check off the boxes and you know make sure everybody has the right hair color and everybody fits the proper tumblr stereotype and if you don't like it then you're some sort of buzzword and yeah and we'll complain about it on twitter mm -hmm. uh that that's not an entertaining show. That's that's you trying to exercise your own self importance, and nobody likes that. And it sure as hell doesn't make for a good show. It certainly does not. And I think so something that something that I think is. Very, in, very, very, int very interesting is th is the fact that when is since you brought up since you brought up X arm that's a that's quite a um that's quite an interesting bit of contrast that we can do because the reason the big reason that X arm ended up failing is not too far removed from the reason why High Guardian Spice ended up failing. They didn't have they it's they didn't have they they didn't have the Tumblr bullshit, but what they did have is undue arrogance. Oh, I still remember that tweet when they say declaring war on all the sci-fi, and it's like that that's a tall order. <laughs> you guys think you can pull that off? Here, well, the reason why I say undue arrogance is the the 
the people behind the um the the creative team behind Xarm had very little experience in doing in doing um in doing an, a full on series work when it came to um animation. A lot of a lot of their work the closest that they had was doing some work with some work with say commercials and so, and a lot of some some work with commercials, some work with music videos, and a lot of work with um, live action material. Well, I, I remember when people were talking about how bad X Arm was, and I actually went to go read the manga, and I got to the fourth or fifth chapter. The story actually isn't that bad. No, it's, it's a pretty good story. The the. St- I had I had said I had said that something like X Arm would have been straight up my alley for being for being a throwback to that '90s style cyberpunk. Um, the kind of the kind of stuff that you might that you might have seen a fair bit of out of Masamune Shiro's output. Mm-hmm. I'd, and espe- especially so much of it so much of the synopsis felt like it was taking some notes from Appleseed, but. You had you had a bunch you had a bunch of pe- you had a bunch of people who had the idea of we're gonna do this in CG we'll do it and we'll we'll use mocap and the rest will and the rest will handle itself. Except even the even the director of B Stars told them don't fucking do that that's a bad idea. And it showed. It again don't. Don't take a. You can take the best story in the world and drop it in the hands of amateurs, and guess what? It's not going to turn out very good. Oh. And when it co- and in that in that same in that same vein. Oh, something something that I know something that I've I've noticed over the years is that the really good type of type of creators will do shit tons of research. When it comes to what when it comes to what they want to do, they will get they will arguably get obsessive over the research that they that they end up doing. While so, while some while the people while the people who end up putting something out that that is that is made that is made more as a statement than as a story. What's very telling about them. Is the fact that they do not that they ca- that um they care more about the appearance of being a writer than actually writing, um, and I've I've mentioned this in the past, but it's one of those things you can't do because, well, people know people know a phony when they see it. Well, and 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 that definitely does show, but. Since we're talking about uh, X Arm and High Guardian Spice, if you ignore the fact that the people who were, uh, who were producing X Arm d- didn't know what they were doing, but if you look at the story and the way the story is actually written, or if you go and you actually read the manga, mm-hmm. it's actually it's very well written. There is there is thought given to why the world is the way it is, why the characters are the way they are. It it's not just tossing, you know, tossing things at the dartboard and looking to see what sticks. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying X Arm is good. It, it it's the manga is, but the the anime is if you can even call it that, is not. But then you look at the approach that's taken to what well, High Guardian Spice. There's no, there's no real thought given to it. It's, it's more of people are gonna like this character because, uh, reason. It, they don't tell us anything about the character. They maybe if you're lucky, you might get some backstory, you might get some world building, but for the most part, it's just. Here's something dumb, stupid, and silly. Laugh at it and you know, like it, or else. Mm-hmm. Which, if you're working with a Cartoon Network type of show, 
that that can work if it's supposed to be a show that requires absolutely no thought then yeah it, stupid pointless meaningless that can work it has its place this is not that place it coming from crunchyroll people expect at a bare minimum to for there to be some sort of uh again world building character development stuff like, they expect a certain degree of quality mm -hmm. and and this show does not provide it instead it wants to be a, a cartoon network show more specifically a cartoon network show you'd see airing at 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when most people aren't going to be watching it. it it comes across as a show for children that also at the same time tries to tackle adult themes and also present itself as an anime which you can tell the people who were writing this show who were trying to present the show as an anime aren't that familiar with anime because the biggest part and I, I will I will stand on this hill and die on this hill. One of the biggest reasons that people enjoy anime is because you're able to tell stories that you wouldn't be able to tell through other mediums. And you do have complex stories. You do have complex characters. It, you're able to do things that are beyond any other medium of storytelling outside of maybe maybe comic books and you know, the highest of high graphic novels it but again for the most for, for the most part anime has a very distinctive style of storytelling if you're going to appeal to that type of audience you need to know what you're doing and you have to give a lot of care and a lot of attention to detail because again we're talking about a medium where you can take something as simple as learning how to paint or how to play an instrument and turn it into a very compelling very emotional story that has nothing to do with painting or playing an instrument but becomes a story about this is how you interact with other people this is how you deal with interpersonal relations this is how you deal with uh, fear. This is how you deal with insecurity. Uh, it becomes a very human story, which is very ironic, but very well conveyed through the medium of animation and entertainment because the storytelling has the capability to do that. But in order to be effective at conveying that type of message, you have to pay attention not only to the message you're trying to convey and how the story unfolds, but you have to pay attention to your characters. A, I would argue you have to pay more attention to it because of the medium that you're using to tell this type of story. And if you can't do that, you're going to fail. And that's why this fails. And that's why it's annoying when you see tokenized characters, whether it's a lesbian couple or a transgender character, they don't convey any real emotion. We don't have any backstory to them. We don't get anything from them. They almost become a joke. It, Except jokes are funny. <laughs> fair point. <laughs> Very fair point. It, but th that is why the show falls short is there's a lot of there's a lot of human storytelling that you can do here and if it was conveyed properly if there was uh, attention to detail if there was care given to the characters high guardian high guardian spice could have been a very compelling very human story that a lot of people i think would have enjoyed because they would be able to uh, I hate saying this. 
it would it would reflect the way that they feel in some way or form. They'd be able to identify with it and be like, you know what? Yeah, I actually get that. This this actually makes sense. It, it would make the characters compelling. It would make them compassionate. You'd you'd actually give a shit. But instead, it comes across as a two p.m. primetime comedy that just isn't funny. Yeah. And well, this is supposed to be a coming of age comedy that is ironically childish a a, ma a magical show with no with no magic and a comedy that is that isn't fu that isn't funny and um i want i want to leave off on on something of a, on something of a high note and the only i will note that the only per the only person who i have in, who i have any real disagreement with in the, in this whole in this whole merry bunch is of course Kate. Um, but for the original for the original creator of it when it when it was just a Tumblr strip, I do hope I do hope that they find success elsewhere. Just take just take this as a learning experience on what you on what you should do when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to letting other people handle your passion project. That's a good point. The, le it... the lesson the lesson that should be taken here is that if you have if you have something that you are passionate about and it's your passion project, never fucking compromise. Because the the narrative that the narrative that I keep seeing when I see when I see when I see the um, story of how this thing got made is somebody had a passion project. They ended up getting it. They ended up getting a bunch of a bunch of people who they thought were going to help. But instead, put their own spin on the on the initial concept, and that's something that you can't do. You especially can't you especially can't let a bunch of enablers talk you into bad ideas. I well. I liken it to the, to the reason why. As as for as great of an author as Brandon Sanderson is, and I want whatever drugs he's on. Um. <laughs> I know for a, I know for a fact that it is, that it is probably there is probably a slim to none chance of us seeing any adaptation of his wor of of his works anytime soon, and the reason for that is he is going to demand to have so to have some degree of in to have some degree of input in his development because of how how clo how close to the chest he plays his particular work. Um. If you need another example, consider the author of Me of the Metro series, like Metro twenty thirty three. There was an attempt to try and do to try and do a film version of that, but when he when he caught wind of the fact that they were that they were going to move it from Moscow into D.C., he had the he had the thing nixed. I mean, you're you're not wrong. It if you truly care about the thing that you created, don't don't sell out. If they really want to, whoever's doing it, if they really want to bring that to whether it's film or animation or make a video game out of it, it's because whatever you have produced, whatever you created, they believe there's an audience for it. Don't don't let them take control of it. That's yours. You you're the one who owns it. Don't give up that ownership. It that that's like me saying, uh, "Hey Mildred, I, I I built a Gundam. Uh, do do you want me to sell you a Gundam?" You're not selling me that. <laughs> but it would be like me trying to sell you a Gundam. But also at the same time, yeah, I'll buy your Gundam, but I wanna, I wanna change all the internal parts. Well, it's no longer it's no longer a Gundam now, is it? It's a Zaku. It don't don't do that. It if it can sell, if it's good, if people enjoy it, it will sell. It, you don't have to compromise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's where a lot of creators. I, I, I'm writing. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a novel right now. If if it was if, if someone was to come to me and say, "Hey, we want to make your novel into uh, an an anime or um, into a movie or a video game," 
but we're going to change this character, we're going to change this character, we're going to change this plot point. Well, it's no longer the same thing now, is it? You're basically just using it as a hollow box to push something that no longer represents the, the thing that I originally created. I might as well just change the name anyways, because it's, it's not the same thing. Hmm. Don't do that. Yeah, it, that's, that's, the fi that's the final lesson that I want to leave off on. But with that, with all that said, I think that I think that's a nice little bow tie to wrap up this particular special episode of Geek Watch. We'll be back here on Sunday with a much bigger target to roast, one that I've been waiting to do for quite a while, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to make any friends with it. But I don't care. And of course, I've, of course, um, tomorrow I've got tomorrow. There's going to be the next episode of the Valley of the Judge and a few other. A few other interesting things we'll be covering as t as the as the weeks go in, as we um as we exit the y the year 2021, which apparent which I'm told is the worst year ever, but um it's the worst year ever except for all the other ones. My point is yeah, just wait until next year. My point is that saying that a year is the worst year ever is not exactly saying much. Uh, I hear 2022 is going to be perfectly fine. <clears throat> but but by the way, uh, how how much beer do I have to buy? Um, you owe um you owe me you owe me a pack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I might as well just upgrade to buying bottles of whiskey instead of beer. But that, but that will do it for this episode of Geek Watch. We'll be back here on we'll be back here on Sunday, like I meant, like I mentioned. So until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.